chapter number three is very familiar, uh, but also very important scripture as Paul is talking to a young preacher named Timothy and giving him instruction even in his day. And so he is given a, a, uh, a prophetic scripture here of what is to come. And we're right in the middle of this scripture. This is where we're at today. This scripture describes the day that we're living in. Now, I, you know, there comes a time when I believe that we as believers need to stand for what's right and not be cowed down by the, uh, you know, by the, the people of this world that are negatively speaking against God and against the things of God. It's time, I believe, that we as believers must stand up and have some backbone about us. The world's got it. The world's got the backbone. They've got the, they, they've got the hatred to go behind what they believe. And the reason I say all of that is I, I, I've been upset this week, and I hope you have too, about all the things that have occurred in, the, in, in uh, Ice Cisco. I, I renamed Asheville because it is the young San Francisco of the East Coast, and I've named it Ice Cisco. And so that's about what they want, you know, I, I, it's gone. I, the, the town of Asheville is just wicked and, and, and full of the devil. It's been like that for years, but with what happened here uh, this past week, it even shows the wickedness and the hearts of man. Now, that stirred me up enough, and that got me, that got me fired up enough and got me to thinking about this scripture and woke me up to the fact we are here. We're, we're not going to be living in perilous times. We are living in perilous times. Now, I, I told you this morning, I think, about the, about the article that I, or, that I commented on that a fellow had put on, uh, on Facebook, and he's a, you know, he's a, a good conservative man, and uh, he was getting slammed because of his comments about what went on uptown and how illegal all of that was and how that they had no right to do what they did. But anyway... That beside the point, comment after comment, there's way over 100 comments, and 95% of those was very negative and hateful toward this person. And I mean, just, just obnoxious, rude, vulgar words that I haven't even thought about. They have put against him, and you could see the hate, and you could sense the hate that was toward that position, and not only toward him, but toward the position that he had taken on what had went on and how bigoted and how hateful that he was. And I'm thinking, y'all, y'all so blind, you can't see the nose in front of your face. Y'all are the ones that are hateful and bigoted. So I, I read down through there and two or three people said, you know, Lord, help us and, and uh, one thing and another and, and ve not very much. And I thought, you know, I'm going to get this man's back. I'm going to help him out here a little bit and take some of the pressure off of him. So I did, and I made a comment, and it's on here. I can read it to you. But, it, you know, it was, it was a, a comment to the affirmative and how that I agreed with him, and my hat, so hat was off to him for taking the stand for what was right. And so uh, I put that on there. I said most of the comments on here are negative, and, uh, which, is, which are the majority of people on here. These comments are negative. And I said, you're all wrong. I said, every one of you, <laughs> well, you know how that went over. And so I, and I, I put that on there and whatever it was else I said, and that's it. Well, about 30 minutes later, I read after someone that had just hated me. I mean, you could tell the hate that was in his words for me. And he started off with a phrase that I would never repeat, and I'm not even going to tell you who it was or because I'm afraid you're going to go read it, and you'll get mad or disgusted as I was. And uh, so, I, he, man, I'm telling you, and the last thing he said was that I was going to hell. And quite to the contrary, I'm not. But that's what he, he didn't tell me to go there. He said I was going there. And so, uh, all that said and done, now that, you know, I was ruffled enough anyway, and I thought, how ignorant are you? How ignorant. So it went on, two or three more people said something negative. My wife read it, and she said, uh uh. So she made her comments, and she got lambasted too. Because she, I think she's taking up for me. But all said and done, you know, there were a bunch of people like what was said against us and a few people like what, was, what I had said. And uh, uh, that was, you know, that, I don't know where it went. I ain't even looked at it no more and I don't really care. But I went, I, the last thing I said was how, you know, how quickly and how hateful 
that the that the liberals are that don't that they don't that when people don't agree with them said something like that and so I'm sure that probably stirred something too but it don't matter to me I don't care anymore I'm just telling you, your preacher I don't care anymore now if that bothers you then I don't know what to tell you but I'm tired of being run over by by the bullies of this world and the by the minority of this world. Because I'm a Christian. I'm not, I'm not going to take it no more. I'll just tell you, I'm not going to take it no more. If I have opportunity to name the name of Christ and give it that opportunity, I'm going to do it. And if it costs me my job, it, no matter what, I'm going to try my best by the help of God to stand for what's right in these perilous days that we live in. And friend, if we all don't get that same attitude, if we all don't get the same attitude that we as believers are in a battle for our for uh, probably for our physical lives as well as well as our you know as our uh, spiritual lives, we're in a battle, and if if we don't fight, we'll go down. We'll go down. And I'm gonna tell you something. I believe it. If God's children have ever took a stand on anything, we better stand for the Word of God and for the truths that's in it. And one reason we're in the shape we're in is because years past we people have cowed down to the enemy, quote unquote Christians have quit caring about the world and about the things of God. Now, I'm no politician, and I'm not running for no office or any such thing as that, but I want to tell you something. I am going to stand for what's right. I told, I told my mama earlier, I, said, I went over to see mom and daddy, and I think I told my wife. I can't remember I told her on the way home. I told her a lot of stuff. I don't remember if that was part of it or not. But, but I, I, I thought about getting me a group together, and uh, I could probably find a group pretty easy to go with me and go down there without a permit, which you're supposed to have a permit in Asheville to stand on the street corner and preach, and just, and just preach hell hot and heaven sweet and see how long I'd get by with before they throw me in jail. And Mama said, Dad, don't get put in jail. I said, I don't care. I said, if it would start, if it would start something, if it would stir something up to stir people up, amen, Paul and Silas were, Paul went to look for, for his place to spend the night. They said he went in every town he went for his place to spend the night first. And you know where that place was? The city jail, because he knew before the night was over that's where he was going to be. Now, I'm not going to do that. I don't think I'm going to do that. But I, I thought, well, maybe I will get a permit and go down there and see how long I'll last doing that without being stoned. And I guarantee you if I went down on the streets of Asheville and started preaching against sodomy, it's which it is. This gay business, forget that. This rainbow crowd, forget that. It's sodomy. It's what it is. And call it, that's what the Bible calls it. That's, that's what I, and you started preaching against that. How long, how long do you think I'd be able to stand there before I was run over by the mob? Somebody probably would. They'd probably stone me to death or shoot, or shoot me. Well, anyway, I've not made up. I'm pretty fired up right now, but I'll probably cool off in a little bit. But let me tell you, that brings to mind this very scripture. And Paul was pointing Timothy to these days that were going to happen. These, this scripture, and I, I'm not going to be long tonight. I was real long this morning, and I didn't know it until I got to the car and seen what time it was. And my wife said, yeah, you, 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 you did pretty good. <laughs> she don't ever say much. She said, you preached hard this morning, didn't you? I said, yeah, well, anyway. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, no, the verse 1. This, no. Now, pay particular attention to this word no no this it's not no no i'm not going to do it it's no this no it is something this no also this is something that is a positive that is going to happen that's something that we can have the knowledge of that is going to happen or now we say is happening because we're living in perilous times this know also that in the last days, this know that in the last days, you and I, you're sitting here tonight, I promise you, we're living in the last days. I believe that all my heart. I don't, honestly, I, you say, but preacher, that's been preached from this pulpit for 175 years. It has always been the same. We are living in the last days. Now, the preacher that stood here 175 years ago, I believe that's how old this church is, isn't it, sister? Didn't you tell me you wasn't here back then, so you don't know. <laughs> that's what she told me when I asked her. I said, ain't the church about 100, didn't we celebrate 175 years, or was it 150 last year? How many? It's it's over 100. So you were here. <laughs> I'm going to be here another 
That's right. That's right. I'll, <laughs> I'll be right here with you, okay? I took his test. This, uh, this little silly test I took the other day that was supposed to tell me my life expectancy. You know what it was? 117. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's what it said. I could expect to live 117. Not if I keep preaching the way I've been preaching. It won't somebody give me. But anyway, as, as we're living, the preacher that preached 175 years ago here in this pulpit, he, he probably once in a while commented on the fact that we were living close to the coming of the Lord. Now, was he preaching perilous times? Probably so. But I'm telling you, the longer we get, the closer we get, to the coming of the Lord. I don't see how in the world it can't be long before Jesus comes because we're living in such perilous times. Now, friend, you know what people don't want to see, don't want to hear today? They don't want to hear this. They want to live in their life, in their little bubble, and they want to do the things that they want to do in life. They don't want nobody upset in their little wagon. They don't want nobody upset in their little, their little ice cream cart. They want to just go along as everything and keep their head in the sand and say, well, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to do this, this, this. You might do it. God may stay that long. But I'm telling you, it's very likely that Jesus will come back soon. More likely than it ever has been. We're closer now than ever to the coming. Every day we get a little closer. And friend, I believe we're close to that end time because in the last days, this know that in the last days, now I believe we're living in the last days. The Bible says perilous times shall come. Perilous here means hard or difficult. That's what perilous means, hard or difficult. The Bible says we're living in hard or difficult times. Perilous times, that's where we're at. That's where we're living. Hard or difficult time. We get so wrapped up, and I've been guilty too. I'm trying my best to get away from this. We've been so wrapped up on the here and the here and the now and in the future of what we can do to satisfy ourselves and to and to satisfy our pleasures in life that we forget that we're going to be here just a short time anyway, and we're going to be around the throne of God one way or the other if we're saved. And friend, I believe tonight that we're sitting here tonight we'll see the coming of the Lord. Unless God takes us out of here uh, by death before, beforehand, I don't believe there's anyone here that won't see the coming of the Lord. Amen. I believe we're that close. So we are living in perilous times. Paul is warning Timothy and telling him, we're living in perilous times that in the last days perilous times shall come. And here is what the situation, this is the way that men are. This is the way that, that people are in their life today. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Have you ever seen such a day that men didn't love them own selves as much as they do? People love themselves. I mean, people are crazy about themselves. They'll show themselves off. They'll put themselves on a pedestal. They'll, you know, they'll tell all the good things that I do, and it's me, 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 and my, my, my. People are lovers of themselves. Men shall be lovers of of their own selves. Look at me. Look what I am. Look what I can do. Look what I have done. Preachers have got the same attitude. Many of them is look what a crowd that I've drawn. Look what a church that I've built. And they're lovers of them own selves. God help us, friend. We need to love the Lord Jesus Christ and promote Him above everything else and above our lives. We need to promote Christ. Now this is the truth and I lie not. We need to promote the Lord Jesus Christ. Men shall be lovers of them own, them own selves, covetous. Have you ever seen such a day when men want everything? If men want what everybody else has got. People want to have everything else. That they want all the world that they can get. They're covetous of the things of the world. And the last time I checked, friend, the world ain't got a whole lot to offer except sinful pleasure. The last time I looked. And that's just yesterday. And today... And you look too, the world has not much to offer except worldly, sinful pleasure. But men shall be lovers of their own self, uh, covetous, boasters of what good they have done. We've got the most arrogant, I'm going to get in trouble, I don't care. We've got the most arrogant people in leadership in our country today that I have ever seen in my life. Amen or oh me. I'm tell you, I have never seen such a day of boasting about all that I have done or all that we have done 
And I'm not, I'm not pinning that on one person. I'm putting it out there. You do what you want to with it. But it is a day where men are boasters of all the good they've done. And the world's going to hell in a handbasket. That's where we're at. That's where we're at and that's what's happening because men cannot but see beyond themselves to see the condition of the world and to see how wicked the world has become and we are on the verge of a war that this world has never seen before. Now, will we have a World War III before Jesus comes? I can't answer that question. I don't know. But I'm telling you what, we're on the verge of a major, a major a uh, disaster in this world, not just our country. I believe our country is in, is, I believe we ought to look out for terrible things, disasters to happen in this country. Whether man-made or whether God-made, I believe America's headed for terrible trouble. You say that's awful negative preaching. I'm telling you the truth. I just believe that's where we're at, and I believe that I'd be wrong if I didn't tell you what I believe. I believe we're living in those days when there's no telling what is going to take place on planet Earth. And the world over, when you go, when, when men and, and when, when men that call themselves Islam or, and they want to form an Islamic state and they want to take over the world, and that's exactly what they want to do. They want to take over the world and don't care who they kill to do it and have no conscience about wiping out men, women, boys, and girls that don't believe like they do. We're headed for disaster. We're headed for trouble. And you say, well, that's not happening in our country. You just hang on for a few days, friend. You just look around for a few days and see if it, it's already happening. But again, our government wants to call it workplace violence. I'm sorry. When someone goes in ho hollering, uh, you know, hollering Islamic terms and cuts someone's head off, that is not workplace violence. That's exactly wicked, and that's exactly terrorism. If I'm not in trouble yet or not, I'm going on. Don't matter, I'm going on anyway. Amen. I'm telling you, we're, we're living in such disastrous, perilous days, and nobody wants to say nothing. Nobody wants to get up here and do what I'm doing tonight. I'd love to have a, I'd love to have, I'd do it. If I had a national platform, I'd tell the world exactly what I'm telling you tonight, and it wouldn't bother me a bit. We need some men that, can, that would do that and stand up, or else we're gone, friend. We're, we're shot. We're living in perilous times. Now, I don't know why, but it seems like in the, last, in the last two or three months or so, maybe a little longer than that, I've had a burden on my heart to tell the truth to people and to not be, not, not be and I've never wanted to be wishy-washy at all, but it seems like I, I want to have a boldness to tell people exactly what's going on, lest I be guilty when I stand before God of, telling pe of not telling people the truth. I got to stand for God. You got to stand for God with what you tell people. And if we if we don't if we don't tell the truth, we'll stand before God with the with the blood of of, of unbelievers on our hands because we wouldn't tell them the truth. Amen. Now, don't mean people are going to believe it. It don't mean people are going to accept it. Now that that lame brain on 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 last night that I was I didn't have no words with him. He wanted me to so bad. He wanted me to get on there. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't take the bait. I wouldn't get back there and call him names and say ugly things about him. I wasn't going to do it. I didn't take the bait. But I'm telling you, he, he won't, would he listen to the truth? Not unless God deals with him. No, he won't listen to a, a verse of scripture. He won't listen to a Bible. He won't listen to nothing else. But I'm telling you what, one day I'll stand before God. And when I stand before God, it won't be because, and, and he goes to hell without God. It won't be because I didn't tell the truth. Hey, friend, you got you got you got to stand because we're living in perilous times, and people are boasters, and people are are uh, covetous and boasters, and so proud. Woohoo! Look what I've done. I mean, but people are very prideful today. People are very proud of the way they live and the way they, you know. I, I saw those two uptown. <clears throat> if I can do it without puking. I'm, I'm dead serious. I, I, I made myself watch the video of that ungodly mess that went on uptown where that ungodly woman that called herself a preacher <clears throat> and those two ungodly women and as she pronounced them married, I was going to say, what are you going to do here when it comes to the husband and wife part? 
I'm just waiting for that. What, which one's the husband and which one's the wife here? And I thought, wow, well, I could pick them out because one had on a veil, should have had it over her whole face, both of them, and, and the other one didn't have one on. And I looked and I thought, which one of you is which? And, and she said, are you ready? She said, are you ready? This is it. And so proud that she could pronounce them married. Now, how did all that take place? Because one liberal, ungodly judge, I'm telling you, they're an ungodly bunch. One liberal, ungodly bunch appointed by an ungodly man overturned the ruling and the will of the people of North Carolina and allowed that to happen legally in your fine city of Asheville. I think I'll move. I think I'll move out of Buncombe County, honestly. If I had somewhere, I think I'd just, if, if I could afford it, I'd just, I'd, I think I might give my place away and just move over here somewhere and live in one of y'all's barns till I got me a house built. <laughs> I used to tell people when they'd ask, where are you from? Don't, nobody knows where Swana Nowhere is at. Nobody knows where that's at. So I'd say, oh, Asheville, not anymore. Somebody asked me where I'm from now, Asheville. No, Swana Noah. I used to even say Black Mountain. No, it's as wicked as Asheville is, Swan and Noah. <laughs> hey, y'all think it's funny, but I'm dead serious. Amen. And it is a little humorous, but I'm telling you, that proud, I mean proud to pronounce two people in sin, in sodomy, and pronounce them married? Where do you find that in the Bible? They wouldn't know the Bible if they jumped up and hit them in the face. Anyway. I'll go on. Blasphemers. We're, we're there. Now, you want to come to me after church, and if you want to see proof of that, you come to me after church, and I'll tell you where to go and see proof of just what the word blasphemers are. We hear it. We hear people not necessarily blaspheming the Holy Spirit, but we hear blasphemy all the days. When that one person put on there that that, that Jesus was a, a, in a relationship with his mother Mary. That's as far as I'm going with that. But I can show you that's blasphemous. And we're living in a blasphemous world where people don't care what they say about God or Christian. <coughs> Blasphemy. Disobedient to parents. Boy, that goes in deep, don't it? You can't, we was talking about this in, in uh, discipleship tonight, men's discipleship class, how that the one reason we're in the shape we're in in this country, and I'm still in the Bible, by the way. I'm, I'm giving you some opinions, and I'm telling you the truth, but I'm still in the Bible. One reason our country's in the mess that it's in is because parents have not parented their children. Parents have let the television babysit their children, let video games babysit their children, and let uh, uh, phones parent their children and babysit their children. And now we, because of all the filth in the world that's on the television and on the video games, children are, have become very disobedient toward parents. And it is nobody's fault but the parents and the preachers for not telling the truth. Now, I parented my children. I didn't beat my children, but I was a good parent to my children. When they did wrong, they got a spanking. When I did wrong when I was a child, I got a spanking. And we was talking about this. You know, it, it wasn't always a, 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 a whipping with a belt that I got. Matter of fact, I don't remember very many of them but I do remember them switches off of them trees. And mama or daddy would say, go get a limb off that tree. I'm going to get a limb off that tree. Now that limb wasn't a big limb. It was a, it was a switch. But they called it a limb on the tree. And on my bad, bad days, mama would say, you go get the limb. You go get me a switch. And on the worst of my days, I'd go out there and I thought, boy, I'm going to get it, so I better not get a good one. And I'd get one, and I'd break it ever so slightly, about every three inches, I'd break it ever so slightly. That didn't work. 
Because then mama went and got the switch, and I was sorry. But you know what? Things turned out pretty good. I'm not out in the world living in sin. I'm not, you know, I'm not out in the world living for, but you know what? You do that today, and you'll get accused of child abuse. Well, I guess I'd just get accused of child abuse. That's not abusive. That's raising a child right. That's teaching them. That's training them. It didn't hurt me growing up. It didn't hurt my children growing up. They were doing pretty good. They were disciplined, though. And one reason we're in the shape we're in is because children have become disobedient to parents. You know why? You know one thing? I didn't know this when I was growing up, but there's, uh, you know, children obey your parents in the Lord. That's the first commandment with promise. Did you know that? That's the first commandment in the Word of God with promise. Is, is children obey your parents in the Lord. Why? So your days will be long upon the earth. Yeah. There's some elderly folks in here tonight that was real obedient to your parents, and I believe that. Oliver Green, a great man of God that wrote many good commentaries that I have in a library at home that I use sometimes, he told this, he told this, and I believe I've got it in one of his books. He said, I'll not live to be an old man because I was not obedient to my parents, and he died young, relatively young, in his 60s. I'm telling you, that's a children obey your parents. And but you know what? Kids don't hear that today. Kids don't hear that today. They don't hear that they should obey mom and daddy. Just do your best and everything will be fine. Everybody's good. Everybody's right. There's no, there's no F. There's no wrong. It's all A for effort. Well, raise children that way, and when they get older, they'll be, they'll be just that way. I can't, even, I can't even add and subtract the way they do today. Complicate that whole mess. Anyway, I digress. I'm chasing a rabbit. Let me get it back to the disobedient, being disobedient to parents. And that is exactly one reason our world, where we become all these things, and our world is in this mess because of these things. Blasphemers, uh, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Have you ever seen such a generation that was so unthankful? All it is is give me more. It's not I'm thankful for what I've got. It's give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Get my hand out so I can have more. You can't hire people to work because we've given them so much and what they're wanting is more. The unemployment rate is a disaster. I'm still in the Bible, by the way. I'm just telling you that we're here and I'm telling you how I know that we're here. I can't hire help at the store because you can't get anybody that'll work if they're getting more money uh, you know, if they're getting more money from the government than they are uh, where they can work, why would you work? I'll tell you why I'll work. I'll work for principle, if nothing else. Because I believe that's the way we ought to live. I believe that's... But, but, but when you, you, know, you, you try to hire somebody that's making more money living off the government than they can make it work, they ain't going to come to work. It's just, well, maybe I can get a little more from the government. Oh, me. Now, those that need it ought to get it, but those that are able to work ought to get out and go to work and be made to work. And if they're given a handout, they ought to be made to work for that. They wouldn't be a piece of trash anywhere in the state of North Carolina if I had anything to do with them. We had all these people drawing unemployment that didn't deserve it. Oh, my. But people are unthankful. People are unholy. Have you ever seen such a day when people were so unholy? ungodly, unholy, don't care about God or the things of God, don't care about the church or the things of church. I went down to that conference deer hunting last week and I was down there and the man told me, he told me, he said, uh, just, I think just a couple of weeks ago, somebody went to their church and stole every air conditioning unit they had outside like we've got sitting right there. Said they stole four of them, they had four, said stole every one of them. Is that holy or is that unholy? That's, that's unholy. Is that godly or ungodly? That's ungodly. People don't care for the house of God. People don't care for the holiness of God. People are unholy. Unholy people. All right, I'm about through. Without natural affection. That goes back up town. You can figure that one out. Uh, <clears throat> may have to get a trash can here in a minute if I don't think about that too much. Without natural affection, truce breakers, a man's word is not a man's word. It's not worth anything anymore. You got to sign a thousand documents to borrow five dollars. That's about right. Why? Because people are not trustworthy. Uh, they're truth breakers. They're false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good. I'm gonna quit right there. I'm tired, and I fed you all. I can feed you out of this without. Listen, fierce despisers of those that do good. 
Now, I hope y'all aren't mad at me now, and I hope you don't hate me, and I hope you don't despise me, but I've told you the truth. This is the truth. Of the, this is the Word of God. You say, well, it's politics. It ain't politics. It's the Word of God. It's the state of our nation, and nobody wants to say anything anymore. God help us. And Frank, you can put that on if you want to. Amen. I don't care a bit if you put that out there. Send it, to, send it to News 13 and see if they'll put it out there. Amen. I don't care. Somebody's got to stand up for the truth and for the Christian faith and for the Christian belief, or I'm telling you, we'll suffer more persecution than we ever have before. God help us. Anything got, anybody got anything to add to that before we dismiss? That's good preaching right there, amen. That's the truth. That's exactly the truth. I hired a boy last week. This is awful.